Good morning, dear learner. I welcome you all in today's lecture. Today we are going to discuss uh, about the properties of atmosphere as well as we will be discussing about the international standard atmosphere. So first of all, what is an atmosphere? Atmosphere is nothing but is it is a gaseous envelope surrounding a planet that is known as atmosphere. So as we are dealing with the subject uh, introduction to aerospace engineering, where uh, we will be given an exercise about the various kind of aircrafts they are flying, how do they fly, uh, they are designing uh, part of the aircraft will also be covered. So uh, the performance characteristics of an aircraft depend on the atmospheric uh, properties through which it flies. Because we know the atmosphere is continuously changing with time. So in order to assess or in order to determine the performance parameter of an aircraft, we must have a knowledge about the properties of atmosphere. So it is very very much needed things any aerospace engineer must know how your properties are varying with attitude. So study of those variations is known as properties of atmosphere. So if we look at uh, the gas actually air, air is actually is a combination of various numerous gases. So if you look at the composition of air, so it will have 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen and remaining uh, portion other gases like carbon etc. will be present. So this is the composition of air. So if we, if we look at the relative composition of air, it remains essentially the same up to certain altitude usually by experimentation we have seen up to 90 km altitude up to 90 km of altitude this relative percentage of constituents remains essentially the same if we are crossing this 90 km at that time the gases begins to settle or separate or you can say ionization process usually starts if we are crossing 90 kilometers. So this atmosphere basically, it, it, the atmosphere is thought of as being composed of various layers. It is having various layers, right? And each of these layers having its own distinct properties, right? Usually uh, we divide this atmosphere into various, uh, you know, uh, layers. I will summarize some of them here. Uh, the first, and most important layer is known as troposphere, followed by stratosphere, third layer is known as lunosphere, alright, fourth is called ionosphere, then it starts and geosphere. Right. So these are these are uh, these are the layers. So atmosphere can be thought of as uh, we uh, composed of various layers. These are the various layers which you will be uh, going today. Uh, you will have an idea how actually these variations is to take place in the atmosphere. So if we draw it schematically, uh, right uh, along the attitude, right, it will be something like that. If I say This is North Pole, this is South Pole, right? Here I am drawing height in miles, right? Here I will draw in kilometers, in kilometers. So as we are starting from zero, so we starting from zero, right? Here also it is zero. I am going up to 20 somewhere and certain. Kilometers. Similarly, here 5, 10. So, somewhere here starting from 0 and less than 20, this zone is known as tropo 
sphere. This is troposphere. Lowest zone of the atmosphere is not a troposphere. Where you will find all these clouds and all. So this zone is basically having a lot of you know weather turbulence. Weather turbulence is be present. Gusts and wind shear. So this will be you know mostly cloudy and stormy zone. Right is very nearest to the earth. The uh, troposphere, and beyond that, if you are crossing around 11 or 11 kilometers beyond that, you are going up to 25 kilometers or uh, 50 kilometers. So I will draw here. It seems to extend up to 50 kilometers. So this is 50 kilometers, and here if you look at this round 30 miles, 30 miles. This zone is stratosphere. So in this zone, basically your ozone layer will also be present. So ozone layer will also be there. So this is ozone layer will also be present uh, within this 50 kilometers uh, attitude. So in this zone, if you look at here, I said this zone not of cloudy and stormy. And in this zone, your airflow will be steady. So steady airflow, right? Steady airflow will be available in this zone. That is stratosphere. So the movement will cross 50 kilometers, which is 90 and beyond 90 if you are going, then ionization will start. So ionization will start somewhere here. So if I say this I am extending it, it is going up to 500 kilometers. 500 kilometers here it is going up to 300 miles. So this zone is ionosphere. So as the name is something ionosphere, lot of you know positively and negatively charged particles will be present here, right? Or electromagnetic, uh, you know, phenomena will happen. So electrical phenomena will involved here. So electrical phenomena, right, will happen positively, negatively charged particles, charged particles will be present in this zone, right? I know square. So we are going beyond that, beyond 500 kilometers side space exploration, we get exosphere. So beyond that, if you are crossing 90, we get exo, exo sphere. So this, this is the zone basically where you will get ramified, ramified gases. All right. So beyond 500 kilometers and all, it will be ramified gas. So this is the basically. Uh, 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 you know, revolution of you know atmosphere starting from uh, mean sea level, and uh, so roughly you can say the troposphere starts from zero kilometers and goes up to eleven kilometers. So if you are crossing from eleven and going up to fifty kilometers, this zone is called stratosphere, where steady wind will be present. And beyond that, if you are going, it will be a positive negative charge particles will be present, and ionization will happen uh, with the gases. Right, beyond that it will be exosphere, right, megasphere and all will be uh, you know coming into the picture. For aerospace applications, particularly for aeronautical application, we are uh, uh, basically doing only with troposphere and stratosphere. Most of the aircraft is to fly within this zone uh, up to 25 kilometers. Hardly we will cross that limit. So that comes under the troposphere and stratosphere. So troposphere is nothing but it is it is a region basically. It is very, very important for the pilot concept. Right, so in this zone, in this layer, right, all these clouds, uh, things will be there. So, when the, if you look at the wind, the characteristic, right, a lot of dust turbulences will be present in this, right, mostly dusty, and will be uh, there it is. And uh, in this zone, basically, your temperature decreases steadily. If you are crossing your, this 25 to 11 kilometers, then your wind will become almost steady. So temperature uh, variation will be constant, right? It's not going to vary in this zone of stratosphere. So in stratosphere, temperature will be constant. Other things will not vary. So this is uh, basically uh, uh, the atmosphere, right? Uh, what are the different layers? These are the different layers. Now come to the standard atmosphere. Why do we need it? Right, basically. Uh, if we want to compare the uh, flight test, then we have done in actual condition. Uh, with the uh, theoretical flight test at the ground, we need to know uh, a standard atmosphere. We must know what are the property variation at that altitude 
and at ground we know already what are the properties there is. So in order to compare flight test with the flight instruments, we need a standard atmosphere. It was very much needed. Uh, so the first or we can say modern standard atmosphere was developed in 1920s independently in the US and Europe. The NATA basically as I said NASA a lead name was NATA. So this NACA generated the US standard atmosphere while the European standard atmosphere was developed by the International Commission for Aerial Navigation. International Commission for Aerial Navigation developed the European atmospheric standard and NACA generated the American standard atmosphere. Both of these standard atmosphere were essentially the same except of some differences. Those differences were resolved in uh, uh, 1952 by an international, com international committee and uh, finally the International Civil Aviation Organization that is ICAO, right, International Civil Aviation Organization accepted a uh, international standard atmosphere. So finally these two atmospheric standard atmosphere were combined together, merged together, there were slight differences, no differences were resolved by international committee and now this is known as international, international standard atmosphere. The short form of it is ISA. So this was adopted by the International Civil Aviation Organization in 19 52 and after that everything whatever we are doing or aircraft whatever flying in natural light and you know at height or at the ground if you want to compare we are using the international standard atmosphere for finding out the performance parameters. So what are basically these are? Uh, this interesting community what they did they carried out a series of experiments with the help of experimental balloons, right or sounding rocket experiments. They have collected the variation of properties right at various altitude. As we know the atmosphere is continuously changing with high time and locality. So this is, they have uh, considered the mood value of those properties. They summarize into a table. And the table is known as International Standard Atmospheric Table. So for uh, any kind of you know experimentation or any kind of you know, designing or path planning or flight performance, we used to refer that table to find out the performance parameters required for a particular aircraft, right. So, if you want to define what is the international standard atmosphere, these uh, are the set of measuring set of uh, values for the properties of atmosphere at various attitudes, right, given by the international agreement is known as international standard atmosphere. So as per as per the ISA, standard sea level conditions are described as for air we consider standard pressure at sea level usually WIP not 101325 Pascal. Right. Or you can say or, 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 or 101325 Newton per meter square mole acid. Right, you know, Pascal. This was this was designed by the international agreement, right? Or ISA for air and sea level. P naught is this. Similarly, we can say T naught or T C level is 288.18 Kelvin, right? 288.18 Kelvin, and the density for air as sea level is 1.2256 kilogram per meter cube. So these are the standard values at sea level, right? Particularly at sea level. So these are the reference values. So by considering this as a reference value, uh, you can find out the uh, corresponding local properties at, at any altitude. And how actually we uh, will find it out? We, we have a 